Without a doubt, my favorite new feature in Adobe Character Animator CC 2019 is the addition of replays. What that allows you to do is record any performance. It can be as short or as long as you want, and then attach that to a trigger. Meaning when I press like the one key, for example, this monster does a little scare move or two makes him wave or three makes him point in the air. These are performances that I recorded down here in the timeline and transformed into replayable, triggerable elements. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through this sample project. This is a free downloadable project. The link is in the video description below. So you can take it apart, learn how everything was made and follow along with me. So let's start with this monster over here on the left hand side. It says press one, two or three to trigger some replays. So when I do that, it shows as animations that I showed before of the scary uh, moving his arms, the wave and the point up in the air. I can see a puppet's replays by making sure it is selected in the timeline over here and then checking out the new replays section in the properties panel here on the right. Uh, if it's getting a little crowded over here, this particular puppet has a lot of uh, behaviors associated with it. I can just twirl up puppet track behaviors so I can see uh, more about my replays. So you can think of this replay section as little uh, prepackaged bundled timelines, basically these little mini animated sequences. So I see scare here is 2.4 seconds long. Uh, when I roll over it, it's hover over and it's going to tell me what are the things I took from the timeline, the dragger face and triggers. And when I click the play button here, it's going to play back that sequence and give me a nice little blue bar that shows me when the sequence begins and when it ends. Okay, so how do you create one of these replays? Well, uh, simply put, you just have stuff in the timeline, you marquee select them, I'm just dragging while left clicking here, I select the things I want to bring in, I right click, and I go to create replay and trigger. That's gonna do two things. Number one is going to add those uh, takes into the replays uh, area over here. And I can see, you know, exactly by default, it's called whatever uh, bars I brought in from the timeline. If I click this and hit uh, enter, and I can call it something different. So let's just call this dance two or something like that. Then I have the ability to rename it. At the same time, that replay gets added over here in the triggers panel. So I can see a new trigger was created. I could assign whatever key I want to over here. And you'll see down in here, layers and replays, it's now showing the exact replay um, that I just added. And if I click on this, it's gonna highlight the associated replay over here. So just like in the past with triggers and the way that they show or hide layers, um, it's the same thing. Now replays are something that can be added to a trigger as well. So when I'm creating replays, I think of my timeline as a scratch pad. This is not something that's set in stone. It's something that I'm gonna create these short animated sequences. I'm gonna leave a little space between my different gestures and create these things that I can very easily package and turn into replays if that's what I want to do. Once you create a replay, there's no link between these two. So you're not editing these, you know, if I make a change down here, it's not going to affect the replay over here. Once it's packaged, it's done. It's put over here in the replace panel and currently there's no way to go back in and edit it. If you wanted to make a change, you would have to go back here, make your changes, make your edits and create a new replay um, to be added to your list. And then you can delete an old replay by just selecting it and clicking delete. Now, one quick tip about creating replays, anytime you have a blend uh, handle available in your uh, take bar, you should probably use it because what that's going to allow you to do is blend from no matter what position the character is in. So even though my character might be over here, uh, you know, you see the monster and he's over here with his head tilted. When I press one, it's going to blend back into that position and then blend out as well when I finish that replay. If I didn't have these blend handles uh, with a smooth blend and had them kind of like they are by default like this, then it's going to be very choppy when the replay comes in because it's just going to go from this frame immediately to this frame without any transition. So basically 99% of the time when I'm creating replays, I want to add blend handles at the beginning and at the end to make sure it eases in and out of the performance seamlessly. Now you have a lot of additional functionality with how these replays uh, stop or begin or sustain or whatever. And that's mainly dealing with this thing called trigger ends. So when you have a uh, replay selected here uh, in, the, in the properties panel, right down here at the bottom, you'll see it says when trigger ends and you have two options, 
let replay finish, which is the default, or stop sustain replay. So th these four girl examples, they're set up and rigged the exact same way with the same wave animation replay, but they're each going to do something different. So let's try them out and see all the differences. So the first one says latch is off and let replay finish. So if I do girl A, select her, I can see that let replay finish is here. And if I look at the trigger, it says it is not latched, latch is not checked. So when I press five, basically it's just gonna play through that sequence and, and just ease out and finish when it's done and go back to normal. And I can keep pressing five, like if I press five midstream, she's just gonna go back and replay that and keep doing it. So basically this is saying, hey, play my sequence, play my replay uninterrupted. Just go through it and make sure I see the whole thing from beginning to end unless it gets interrupted by another replay or trigger or something like that. The next one, this is girl B, she has been set instead to stop sustain replay, um, but her trigger is also unlatched. What that means is this sequence is only gonna play when I hold down the six key. So I'm holding down six, she's going through the sequence, but when I let go, she immediately stops. So I can kind of have all these false starts by pressing six for a little bit and letting go. Um, and it's only going to play if I'm holding down six. Now here's where things get interesting. Uh, she's reached the end of her sequence. I'm holding down the six key still, but her hand is stuck in the air. So it is actually sustaining on this frame until I let go of the trigger again. And you'll notice, look at the blue bar over here. Once it reaches the end, if so stop uh, sustain replay is on, it's gonna do this little um, animated effect saying that it's kind of holding in this position. So where exactly is it holding? Well, it's holding on the last blend out handle that it can find. So it's looking for all of your takes, everything that's in this sequence, and it's looking where that last blend begins. And wherever that is, wherever that square is basically on the timeline, that's where it's going to say, I'm gonna stop right here and hold until you let go of the trigger and finish that replay from playing back. So this is a great way to get a lot of mileage out of one animated sequence. You might create something that's 10 seconds long, but mainly maybe sometimes you only want you know the first three seconds and you want to stop the wave, or you want it to go on for a while and hold uh, you know on this specific frame. So you get a lot of flexibility when you set something up like this. Next one, this is probably the least useful one, but I'm gonna show it anyway. In this case, uh, this is girl C. She has been set to when trigger ends, let replay finish, and her trigger has been set to latch. So when I press seven, this is essentially the same thing that happened with number five, but uh, you know, so it plays back, it looks like it happened, but then when I press seven again, it looks like nothing happened, but I still see this little blue line appearing. And basically that's because it's been latched, um, you know, the trigger has a little latch icon, uh, check mark over here. It basically means that I had to, you know, I had the latch on state and it played, and then I had the latch off state, but nothing happened because the trigger didn't fire. The trigger was set to off. So bottom line, you don't really have to understand why this works or how this works, but um, I would not recommend this combination very often because a lot of times what it leads to is, you know, you press seven, you see your little animation, you say, oh, that looks great. Now I want to do it again and you press seven again, nothing's happening, uh, even though you see this little blue bar uh, appearing. And again, that's just because of this combination. These two things aren't communicating properly. It just doesn't make much sense. So finally, this last girl over here, this is girl D. She has been set up to stop sustain replay as well as latch uh, checked for her trigger. And what that's going to do is I just tapped eight, she does her wave animation, and she's gonna automatically hold on that final wave until I press eight again, and that's going to blend out. Again, same thing that we saw over here at six, it's gonna pause on that last uh, blended uh, handle position, and then it's going to just stick there, and then I press eight again, and it goes down. So the difference between six and seven is I had to hold down six uh, the whole time to have that wave animation uh, play and stop, and instead with eight, I only have to tap it once to go until I stick, uh, or I can you know, stop at midstream so I can press eight again and she's immediately going to go back. So it's just two different ways of dealing with the trigger and the replay. And again, just like latching and triggers uh, in Character Animator, a lot of this is personal preference and what feels best to you. Do you want to hold down a trigger for something to work or do you want to tap it kind of an on and off like a light switch for it to work? Um, so really, 
I personally think there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's whatever works for you and your puppet and your performance style. All right, so that's it for this example project. That's kind of covered the basics of what replays are, how to create them, and how to manipulate the properties in uh, the replay section of the properties panel and the triggers panel to achieve different effects. Now let's take these things that we just learned and try to apply them to a character of our own. All right, so from the start panel, I'm just gonna go to Chloe, you know, really simple, basic character, and I will click on her to bring her into record mode. Now, the first thing I'll do, if I'm doing anything with arms moving, I'm going to add the new arm IK behavior. And the reason for that is, if you have multiple poses and your hands moving all over the place, you can run into situations where your elbows can get bent in weird ways and it looks like she's double jointed or they're you know not not bending the correct way they're not solving they're not resolving in the way you would want them to uh, and so setting up arm ik and using that as recorded data when you are creating a replay is just going to make your life a lot easier and avoid mistakes that look like this so to do that really quickly in rig mode here i'm going to select my top level character i'm going to go to plus arm ik that's going to add it in and now i'm going to tag each of the arms uh, with arm ik so i'm going to select uh, the origin here and click that and make that the shoulder i'm going to create a new handle and put that around where the elbow is and tag that as elbow and then i will select the existing draggable handle and uh, tag that as a wrist i'll go ahead and do the same thing for the left side tag that as a shoulder make this as an elbow and make this the wrist. So when I come in here by default now, when I bend her arm, it's really the elbow is kind of favoring one direction. Even if I go up here, I'm trying to wave, it's not really letting me. It's kind of always favoring the elbow bending one way. Same thing with the other arm, except it's done in uh, the reverse direction. So it's really favoring, you know, moving the arm to the side like this. So what I can do is uh, make sure that both reverse bend left and right are both armed for recording. And that just basically means when I press the record button, this elbow data, whatever way I want the elbows to bend, will be part of that recording and will force the replay, the elbows to bend the correct way. So in this case, I kind of want to rest on the hips. So in this case, I think I'm going to make the reverse bend right and click on that to make sure the arms look good for a rest pose like that. Now replay can be made up of as many elements as I want. In this case, I probably don't want all of these things as part of my replay, you know, my face movements, my eye gaze, all of that stuff. So I'm actually gonna uh, click to disarm a lot of these different things and really only focus on the dragger and the arm IK. And so what I'm gonna do is just put the arms as I would want. I need to make sure I click that reverse bend right here. And then I'm going to click record for just a second and do something like that and click uh, record again to stop it. All right, so I'm gonna press the plus key to zoom in a little bit more. And I can see I basically have this little two second pose and uh, it's only kind of holding the hands in one position. As we mentioned about blending before and wanting to do that, I'm gonna select both of my dragger uh, takes here and I'm just gonna drag to add a little bit of easing in from uh, the sides, the intro and the outro. And now you can see how the arms are going to kind of ease in and out. You'll also see that I have my data for arm IK here. So if I have those boxes checked or not, that information is associated with the replay as well. Okay, so let's try this out. I'm going to marquee select all of these different things. I'm going to right click them and go to create replay and trigger. And that's creating this new replay called arm IK2 and dragger2 because there are two of each of those and they've been added over here. I'm going to select it, press enter and call this rest. Now, if I tried to play this right away, it's gonna give me a little message that, oh, I forgot to arm the triggers behavior. And of course I did, because I only had arm IK and dragger here. So I wanna make sure triggers is armed. Replays kind of follow, follow the same uh, rules and principles as triggers do. And then I now I can press play and you'll see it plays back that sequence and does that nice blend in and out as I uh, trigger that pose. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's do a, a little arm waving animation. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room here. I'm gonna move over here and I'm going to drag one arm uh, on the hip and the other up here. And I'm gonna do a short little wave uh, like this. I'm also gonna do a palm flip uh, as part of this. So I believe that's the uh, three key it looks like. So as part of the animation, I'm going to press three. So let's press record. All right, so I play this back and she does her wave and there's a very clear choppy uh, transition there. So let's make sure that in my draggers, 
uh, here that I have a little bit of blend. I'm gonna shift select both of them and have them gracefully blend in and out. And so now it'll move like that and that looks pretty good. So let's select all of this, uh, including now my trigger. Remember I had this trigger down here for uh, palm swap and I'm gonna select all of those, right click them and go to create replay and trigger. That's gonna add it over here. It's 3.3 seconds long. I'll click enter and call this wave. And uh, now when I play this back, it's gonna play through the whole wave animation. Now here's something useful to understand about replays. Um, if I rearm all of these things, I'm just pressing command click uh, to arm or disarm everything. And that's control click on windows at the same time. Then you'll notice when I trigger this wave thing, the arms, at, you know, they're going in the right position, including the arm IK, but I'm able to keep talking and looking around and doing face movements and all that stuff. Same with the rest pose. Um, it's doing the exact same thing. So whatever you bundle up, uh, basically in a replay, that's the stuff that's going to play back. But whatever is not bundled up is fair game and it's going to be looking for then live data, um, you know, whatever you have at any given time. So you could only create a, you know, group of replays that only affects uh, the arms, basically. You're only dealing with arm IK and draggers and everything else then uh, is up to you moving around. So you can see how I can build up a big performance library of poses for this character or things that she can do. So let's do like a dance move. That's basically gonna have all these things associated with it. Um, let's have her arms up in the air here. I'll turn the reverse bend off. Uh, same with this one. Let's turn the reverse bend left. So it is going to bend as I would expect. I'm going to make her blink by holding the B key and let's do something like this. All right, so that performance had a ton of things that were armed and uh, ready to go. So I'm gonna make sure I do the blend here where I select all of these uh, you know, blendable areas. I'm gonna make sure they blend in and out. And then I'm going to select all of this stuff and right click it and let's turn that into a dance. And now when I play this back, she will do her little dance back and forth and then move her arms back down. So replays are useful both for live performances where obviously you know you want your character to wave to your fans on Facebook or YouTube or Twitch or whatever, you have the ability to do that. It's never been easier to set that up, but it's also helpful for recorded pieces. So actually let's select and delete all these things in the timeline here. Um, I'm gonna move over and if I press record, and let's just do you know the dance animation which had a lot of different things going on with it so we'll play that back we're recording and instead of when i stop just showing a single bar of you know here's my trigger and i can't do anything to it it actually breaks it out and shows me each of the sections uh, that i did including the blend handles so uh you know the arms blending let's uh, disarm this character so i can see it a little bit better um so I can see exactly where that, uh, where that blend in and out happened, where the head is moving, and I can adjust these. And I, so I, this gives me a lot more control over, uh, you know, if I'm doing a replay over and over again in a recorded performance, maybe I don't want it to look pre-canned and have the same thing over and over again. And so I have the ability here to kind of tweak things and edit and shorten or lengthen or adjust the blend to give it a little bit more uh, dynamic possibilities. Now, one more thing to note about replays, when you export a puppet, so when I have my puppet selected and go to File, uh, Export Puppet, it's going to save your replays as part of that puppet. So when you create a character and you create, you know, you spend all this time creating all these little custom animations, those will carry through when you are sharing your character uh, with other people. All right, so obviously we are just scratching the surface of what's possible with replays, but hopefully this is a good introduction to help you get started adding replays into your own characters. We would love to see what you create, so please use hashtag uh, character animator on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and elsewhere. Uh, we'd love to see how you're creating replays. And if you run into any issues, have any problems rigging, the best place to get help is the official character animator forums. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and have fun.